Hello there and welcome to the show. Today we are featuring Maurice Njiguna, a shipping entrepreneur based in the United Kingdom. And on our back home segment, we will show you how the Maasai people are interacting with wildlife in Amboseli. But first, here is a sneak peek. If you want to book a container, anything you want to import from UK, we can facilitate the process. He began small, shipping personal staff from the UK to Kenya. The client are Kenyans who are based in UK. Little did he know that this would grow into an international shipping and courier company. By air, we queue about two tons every week. Maurice Njuguna, who is based in Luton, UK, shares his journey abroad. Yes, time now for Maurice Njuguna's story. And Alex Chamoda, over to you. It is a chilly morning here in Luton, in southeast of England, about 50 kilometers from central London. But even with the cold temperatures of the English side, Maurice Njoguna and his team of highly skilled men and women are busy going about their day. Their latest task, preparation of a consignment of goods destined for Kenya via Heathrow Airport in just a couple of hours. You see, Njoguna is a logistics specialist and the executive director of Ken Exports Limited, a shipping company that ships goods from the UK to Kenya through door-to-door -door and consolidation services, meaning they collect a number of individual shipments that are small in size, combine them, then ferry the same together as a single container. Once ferried, the company then distributes the shipments to the various individual clients. We take charge of every, the whole process. We come to you, we pick up your package, we process it, we send it to Kenya, we do the clearing and you just go and collect from our office. Yes, that is what Njoguna has been doing for the last seven years since establishing his business. We have featured him before, back in 2019. At the time, his business was still picking up steam. Nilikianza nilianza kama ni biashara yangu nafanya unaona kununua vitu napeleka nauza alafu watu wakaanza kuniambia oh nitumie hii nitumie ile watu wakaanza kuja wakiwa wengi sasa wakaanza kawa wanachukua space yote kwa container na baki mimi bado vitu zangu siwezi tuma so nikaona ni, ni continue hiyo biashara initially i was just doing sea freight eh ah, containers lakini baadaye tukaanza kufanya mpaka air freight so so since then, sasa nimekuwa tu ni kiopari na Jina Ken Exports. It's registered in UK and Wales. Na we do everything as per the, the laws of this country here. Yeah. Tuliko client are Kenyans. Kenyans who are based in UK. They keep us busy. And But of late, Kenyans who lives in Kenya, who are doing online shopping, they're also, the number keeps increasing. So yeah, they're keeping us busy as well. But we have some other uh, organizations, um, schools, especially the international schools. Someone who is in Kenya and you want to buy maybe a spare part or anything from an online store which is based in UK or even if it's in anywhere in Europe. So they use our address as the delivery address because now most of the sh stores here, online stores, they can't send direct to Kenyan address. So they use our address as a delivery address so once we, re we receive the package, we weigh it, we label it again, and then we send it to Kenya. 
Once in Kenya, we take it to them or they can come and collect from our warehouse. Ken Exports ships a fully loaded container every 10 days by sea and about two tons by air every week. Ken Exports is registered as a haulier with UK ports. It can collect and deliver containers from and UK ports. It can also facilitate and handle shipping processes to any part of the world. The company also does shipping via air cargo services. According to Juguna, most of the items shipped include household appliances, furniture, clothes, and electronics, with air being the most preferred means for most clients. From here to Kenya by sea, by within six weeks, Mizigo na kumifika. Ndege pia tunatumaga every Friday. So, tunachukua mizigo kwanza Saturday, mpaka Thursday, Friday, tunazituma. Tukitumia airline kama KQ, they fly all with every, I think, weekend, tunachukua ga weekend flight. So, by Monday, mizigo yiko kule, tuna inenda through normal clearance process, alafu tunawapatia. So, come on as a keep your time, timeliness, customer pia wanafraia. Juhu vitu, mostly vitu customer wanaondaga zikena na ndege, zinakuwaga vitu urgent. So, wanapenda sana zikifika mapema. This is why having a reliable partner is crucial. Njuguna's favorite airline is Kenya Airways. It's non-stop, you know. It's one, Tuki wake up, he throws in and uh, within eight hours. Eh? So after COVID, when COVID did come, there was no other airline which was doing cargo to direct flight to Kenya. Or any, any, I think Kenya Airways will come to vegetables to UK. So on their return flight, we will be able to go and the good thing with them, Mizigo ikipanda hapa, inenda direct. I can't complain because the goods get there in okay, with very fast. And I use them when I'm flying to Kenya as well, all the time. KQ's advantages coupled with Njuguna's work ethic and tenacity has seen Ken Exports increase its range of services. Recently, we've started doing full container loads. So that's for everyone else uh, worldwide. If you want to book a container, anything you want to, to, to import from UK, we can uh, facilitate the process. The expansion has also seen Ken Exports open another base of operation, a yard that is meant to meet the increased demand brought about by growing business. That one will be for self-storage tutaweka containers za storage. So mtu kama wewe ukiwa Kenya, maybe you are in business, you want to buy vitu huku lakini from different suppliers and you want to ship them as a full container load for yourself. So tunakuprovidea storage space. You buy from ABCD suppliers, zinakuja pale, tunaziweka hapo. Ukifikiria saa zisha ja container, then we bring a container, we put it on the floor, we do the loading for you come an inspection to arrange inspection and everything and then we send it to Kenya. Wow, how inspiring and Alex Jamwada has more about Maurice Njuguna right after the break. In the first part of this show, we saw how Maurice Njuguna was able to establish a successful business by seizing an opportunity that he stumbled upon. But just how did he end up in the UK? I was like I was class 8, I went high school, Nanyuki Boys High School. Nanyuki Boys High School, I tried my best. I managed to get Max Zakun Pileka Narobi University. I went to Narobi University, I went economics and social, social studies, yeah. Yeah, alafu nikaja huku sasa nika, nikafanya some courses in colleges and then later on nikaenda kufanya my masters in accounting in Sheffield Hallam University. Yeah, venye nilimaliza sasa nika, nikaanza kupiga mgu. <laughs> eh, nikapiga mgu, nikapiga mgu, jobs hapa na pale and then nikajipata kwa biashara. So nimefuwa. Nibiwa hiko employed? Yeah, yeah, nimefanya organization in London. There was a charitable organization I was working for. I worked for them for I think two years, and then those days, Kukanza, 2008, who is my financial crisis here when it happened. So nika nika jiona sasa biashara yenye nikuwa na jibu kuanzisha, kama ina bakisha kidogo. So nika endeleza kutoka apo, msa mpaka apo kwenye niku. 
In the seven years that Morris has been in operation, he has successfully met the needs of thousands of clans, both home and away. A fact that he attributes to his team of well-trained professionals. My missus, she's behind it as well. She's a qualified social worker. I require employed. So with time, to go on a total, to go on a total, to go on a child care issue, to go on a better to join hands to work together. So yeah, so to know Fanya na yeye na um, she's more now in charge of this place. I'm more in charge on the other side. Yes, we have assigned some duties to different different of them. Lakini like we work as a team, you know, because we all know the process from A to Z. So any one of them, they know where we st where, to, where what to do. Lakini saku na wenye wanafanya mambo ya data entry, accounting. Na sasa hizo kuansa phones, na sasa na kuna drivers, na driver buddies, yeah? Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, tuko hivyo. Na uh. Nairobi, do you have an office? Yeah, Nairobi tuko na warehouse kwenye tuna dispatch mizigo, na pia huko tuko na watu kama kumi na wawili hivi. And we get busy when we are offloading containers, so tuna, tunapata watu wa casuals. Mm -hmm. uh. His other secret is the healthy relationship he has with his clientele. First, ni trust because you have to keep your word. Na watu wakipatia vitu zao, na especially zineza kwa maybe azina monetary value, lakini zikona sentimental value, na wanataka kupata hizo vitu the other side. So wakikupatia suitcase imejaa vitu zao, venye walipima huu kama ilikuwa kilo ishilini, lazima ifike kule ikiwa kilo ishilini. So that's one thing. Na we've been doing well on that side. This good name is what has driven his business to greater heights. And as we approach the festive season, business is booming. Towards Christmas, hapo, ukianzia August, kuanzia August, hapo ndi unawana watu wengi umenza kutuma vitu, kusafirisha juu. What they do, it's excess baggage to them. Like maybe they are planning to go to Kenya to visit. So wanatuma the goodies nyo watakuna kupeana. So wanazituma in advance, ndi wanenda wanapata anazo na kule. I love that one. I do. I work by sea. It's cheaper, so they send them in advance. They will, by the time we pick up the crew, see what has been done. Another one. But the son of Laikipia admits that business has not been that rosy, especially with new developments and shifting economic dynamics caused by Brexit. It may affect the dog. You will have customers who are going to from Europe to. Well, we are going to move from Europe. We are going to go to the warehouse. I love to know to meet Kenya. So now they are forced to pay duty. If you're buying something from Italy, I'm a France, I'm a Germany, Zikija apa uko liable na VAT. So there's that paperwork has to be done. I'm a duty. There was only there was, single paperwork. Yeah, there was no paperwork. It yeah. was like a common market. And when it comes to oversight, Njoguna says the industry is heavily regulated and one has no choice but to be compliant. Uku first of all ni health and safety, second ni lazima keep your books. Yeah, lazima u HMRC revenue muone, eh? <laughs> Unafanya hesabu zako kama ni VAT returns quarterly nini, everything is above board. Other than that, freedom uko iko ya kufanya as long as unafanya kila kitu as per the books. Njoguna hopes to replicate this back in his home country. Hiyo ni service nyingine tunauliza huko sana. But I would like one day to transition, because with the new Brexit and these issues, mtu wa kituma kitu kutawa Kenya sasa, si lazima ende through European standards. So, kuna possibility now with the authorities, I think now they've been in contact. Kuna venye biyashara sa ineza kuwa very raisi, raisi kutawa vitu Kenya kuleta huku. Yes, thank you Alex for that amazing feature. Time now for our back home segment where we get to showcase Kenya's beauty to the world and our Lodo based reporter Lauren Nenok is in Amboseli where she got to spend time with the Maasai people and how they're interacting with the wildlife there. Take a look at this. Our journey to the Maasai village in Amboseli begins from the Amboseli Serena Safari Lodge. We take a bumpy ride to the nearest Maasai village. 
the fourth village out of the six that are in Amboseli National Park. Thank you. Upon arrival, the villagers will come us with song and dance. As I joined the colorfully dressed women, Charms Media CEO Alex Chamwada joined his fellow men. Wow, the welcoming dance was worth it. Before we begin our tour, one of the Maasai men leads us in prayers. Hi. Nice. 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 And now the tour begins with a sit down to learn about different medicinal herbs and their uses. This one for malaria. Malaria. Yeah, and then the way to use it, we do a bra, scratch it, and then we put in the water, and then we warm it a little bit. You warm it. And then you go up here one glass. If he or she drink, this salt to make to vomit. So we vomit the brunt of it. We use for the toothbrush. Ah. I hope you have saw how they yes, yes, did you? Yes, yeah. This is for the stomach problem. Absent, okay. uh, rearing, okay. blood stooling, and uh, we boil the way it is. And then for us, you know, our food is meat, mm -hmm. blood, and milk. Yeah. So the more you drink the unboiled one or uncooked one, the more it may have a problem. problem. But that's why, if in case of in, if we can take this, we do buy them so that we can to prevent also it cure. Shortly after, I am engaged in a fire lighting exercise. Here they use dry donkey, zebra or elephant dung to light fire for home use and bonfires. This is a, a cedar and a kesha. And elephant dung, siburang and donkey dung. They are not ruminant animal. So you don't use anything? No, any else. buy any material? No, no. This is a test of patience, but after a thorough job, the fire is lit. So this is how we do uh, in every morning. So each woman they bring the firewood, they light it, they put all the houses. Yeah, to make house light, cook and to the body. It is evening and the animals are streaming into their sheds one after another. And this is also time for milking. I am told that goat milk is drunk when boiled, while sheep milk is drunk when fresh. There is a goat already being milked and I'm asked to give it a try. So you press it the breast, you press it hardly, yeah, so that you can able to see whether you will succeed. <laughs> press hardly. After the goat comes a cow. This is my first time attempting to milk one. Yes, to know that someone... I failed because the cow is irritated with my scent. <laughs> Nonetheless, this is a unique chore to indulge in. You can not, not need don't, don't need that. We have placed our wildlife corridors or our land for wildlife. So you find that they have free to move in and out of the park. The park is not fenced. So you find that these wildlife are really enjoying being here. We don't have uh, poaching at all or even threats for the wildlife. So you find that they are not harmed or even they are not threatened. You come to Amboseli, you see the coexistence between the wildlife, the humans and the nature is very mutual. The community live uh, peacefully with the wildlife and the nature is still pristine, it is not destroyed in, a, in any way. As I conclude my tour, I walk into the Maasai market with Mama Somoina or Pakua. It is now time to shop 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 for jewelry Oh, and did I mention that I received a new name from this wonderful lady? She named me Nalepo, meaning the milking woman. Wow, so much to learn. 
enjoy an experience from this Maasai village that has been in existence for 15 years. For back home, my name is Lauren Hanna. Thank you, Lauren, for that beautiful story from Amboseli. And with that, we have come to the end of the show today. Remember, earlier in the show, we were able to feature Maurice Njuguna, a shipping entrepreneur based in the United Kingdom. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.